Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today. Uh, my name is Stephanie Whitlin. I am one of the admissions officers at the Stanford Graduate School of Business and I'm excited to be here today and join the rest of the panelists um, in our webinar on your journey from Stanford to the East Coast. So today we're going to spend probably the next 50-ish minutes or so learning a little bit about uh, their experience, the panelists' experience from Stanford to the East Coast, and they are here to help answer any questions you might have as it relates to even their experience at the GSB and what they're pursuing now. And I do want to take this opportunity to elaborate on the importance of our global community and that we do have students and alumni, especially alumni all over the world. Um, we have over 60 regional clubs and over 30,000 alumni who live globally. So it is a broad network, but I think more importantly, beyond the numbers, it's about the tight-knit community and the deep connections that those um, networks provide folks in various regions all over the world. So you can see many of the different interest groups that we offer our students um, and ways in which you can get engaged. Now I'll take some time to um, introduce you to our panelists who have joined us here today. Um, I will ask that at this point we can, um, all of you who are here, feel free to unmute yourself and go on video. Um, I think it probably makes the most sense for us to start in alpha order. And it looks like Carolyn is still probably trying to join in unless I don't have this open enough. So maybe there are more. No, nope. okay. All right, so we'll start with you, JB. If you could just do a brief introduction, um, tell us a little bit about you know, where, where you were prior to joining the GSB and what you've been doing since you graduated. Okay, yeah, so um, it's all written down here, but I went to Harvard undergrad, moved to Los Angeles and worked in Hollywood, but in the television industry. So the uh, talent it's a creative arts agency and then a production company um, before joining the GSB. And then after joining the GSB, I worked in consulting for a while at Boston Consulting Group um, in Los Angeles before I moved to Philadelphia. And now I am at Comcast, um, working in their corporate, corporate strategy group. All right. Happy, Great. happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for being online today. We appreciate it. All right. And then now, thanks for joining us. Welcome. Hi, happy to be here. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I went to Brown undergrad. I was a political science major. I then spent two years working at a boutique consulting firm in Boston, um, where I got really interested in consumer goods and the retail space generally, transitioned into uh, a post-consulting role at Ross Dress for Less, a national off-price retailer where I did corporate strategy for four years uh, before the GSB. And then when I was at the GSB, I did my summer internship at Il Maquillage, which is a luxury direct-to-consumer makeup brand. Uh, and I rejoined them when I graduated this spring and I'm now helping um, helping uh, do a performance marketing and, and building out a performance marketing team for a new product launch. Great, very exciting. Thanks for joining us as well. And then finally, Sasha, welcome and thanks for being here. Uh, we would talk at this uh, about being alumni, but clearly you're still in the throes of your educational experience. So I think you'll also have a great perspective to share with the, with the group. Of course, thanks for having me. I actually started out with Nell's class and so, hey, good to see you again. Uh, I'm graduating class of 2022 because I'm a dual degree with the Harvard Kennedy School. And so that means my program is two degrees in three years. I went to Carnegie Mellon for undergrad and then pursued a career at Goldman Sachs where I worked in investment management. I helped run a foundations and endowments team. Um, so we invested on behalf of foundations and endowments. Because I have two summers, last summer I worked on my own company. So I launched a company, part of the, both the Chan program, which is an amazing program that Stanford now offers. And then this summer I'm doing venture capital at PayPal Ventures. So happy. And then I'm uh, 
not from New York. I'm from Providence, Rhode Island, but I will be back in New York post school and I'm in New York now. Great, wonderful. Well, I love that each of you bring a different perspective to the room in terms of your experiences. And I think that'll be certainly helpful for those that are online today to um, learn from you. So um, let's first start with, in, in the case of JB, for example, who you have at least been out for a couple years, um, if you could just walk us through sort of your journey and exploration in terms of pursuing a career path and maybe talk a little bit more about how you did land in Philadelphia and, and maybe what resources were available to you as you were exploring that. Oh, you're on mute, sorry. <laughs> happens to the best of us. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we, we use Teams here, so <laughs> stop getting used to Zoom. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll start with undergrad and go through that really quickly up to GSB because I think that's an important part of this, the overall story. Um, I, funny enough, I en ended up doing consulting after GSB, but in undergrad, I wanted to do consulting or banking and wanted to follow what my pa whatever my passion was. And that's what had me move out to Los Angeles to, to follow that Hollywood dream and work in entertainment and landed me in, tel in television. Um, and I did that for a number of years. Saw a number of tech companies who are now firmly in the TV space join television, uh, the industry, and was trying to figure out like, why are they doing this? Like there's something I don't know because it doesn't make any sense from my perspective. Uh, the TV business was changing a lot. So that was sort of made sense to go to business school at that time, knowing I could always go back. Um, very fortunate to get into Stanford, and we can talk about that too, I'm sure. But um, when I once I got to Stanford, I wanted to have flexibility to figure out things because TV in LA is such a niche industry, and that's what had me thinking about consulting because consulting gives you flexibility to still figure things out. Um, and that was very top of mind. Got into BCG, uh, did BCG, was at BCG right, out of, right after business school, and moved to Los Angeles. What actually brought me to Philadelphia was I got married and we we're having a baby and we wanted to move back east and consulting offers flexibility so we could pick any city we wanted just about as long as it was a BCG office. And there happened to be a BCG office in Philadelphia and real estate is very affordable in Philadelphia, especially compared to New York and DC. Um, so that's what that's what made Philadelphia make sense. Um, and that I knew in the back of my mind, Comcast was in Philadelphia and someone who had been interested in tech and maybe wanted to go back to media or entertainment, Comcast owns NBC Universal, even though that's based in New York. So like Philadelphia sort of made sense because I still wasn't completely sure what I wanted to do. Um, now I'm in corporate strategy at Comcast, which is like sort of very similar to consulting, but do different projects with for NBC, for Comcast Cable, for Sky, which is based in Europe. Um, and I'm still very much trying to figure out what I want to do, though it's probably going to be somewhat something back in the media space. Um, so long winded answer, but I hope I answered the question there. <laughs> yes, no, thank you very much. And I'm sure folks will have follow up questions for you. Um, Let's see here. Um, Sasha, I wanted to talk a little bit about your journey and maybe even how you explored pursuing a joint or dual degree um, and what your thought process was like for those who may be considering that um, and also just how you decided between you know, wanting to pursue both at um, HKS and the GSB. Sure. Initially, the plan was only to get an MBA. One of the reasons I wanted to get an MBA is because I'd been in one company, in one industry, my whole entire career. And I had a different role every two years, but still I knew there was a lot I didn't know. And Stanford was a great fit for me in terms of being a playground where I could kind of explore my interests um, without, with no pressure really, just explore what, what would make sense for me. And so I went to GSB and then started to realize I had this big gap, which was the policy side. And I really enjoy government. I enjoy talking about policy, uh, different aspects of policy when it comes to business. And so decided to apply to the Kennedy School. Um, 
Stanford is phenomenal once you get in, in terms of helping you figure out how to do both. And there's so much flexibility. Uh, and the two have been very complimentary. I'm very glad I'm doing them. They're very different degrees, but very much go hand in hand. Great, thank you. Thanks so much for elaborating a bit. And yes, Carolyn, hi, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, I had the slide up earlier um, with your panelists information, but if you wouldn't mind taking a moment to introduce yourself, um, let us know a little bit about you know, what you did pre-GSB and where you're at now um, and anything else you'd like to elaborate on. So welcome. Sure, yeah, it's great to be with you today. Sorry for some major technical difficulties yes. um, and, and a maiden name to married name change, which I think caused some confusion. Um, but I am Carolyn Farley. I'm a partner with Arborview Capital. We are a growth equity impact focused firm based in Washington, D.C. Um, before the GSB, I was actually in South Africa for four years, um, also in impact investing, um, but at an earlier stage. So I, I spent two years as an operator uh, with an ed, uh, education startup and then two years um, in uh, impact venture capital. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Sure, it's a pleasure. Um, so what we'll do is I see a couple questions in um, the chat. Um, Nell, I think this might be one for you to answer, but I encourage anyone who has anything to add to share. Uh, so June has a question about coming from a non-traditional background. She's worked as a fa fashion designer for years at both Tommy Hilfiger and Book Brooks Brothers. She wants to learn about what kinds of opportunities Stanford has to offer candidates like her or those coming from a non-traditional background, um, especially as she's interested in transitioning into the retail or consumer space and finance. So might you, especially given your background, be able to give some uh, you know, insights and that anyone else that wants to chime in, feel free to do so. Sure, and I'm getting an internet unstable notification. So please, if I break up, just you know, continue on without me. And um, if that does happen, you're welcome to take your audio off. That happens okay. a lot, so it might be easier. And then, sure. I'm sorry, your video off. Yeah, we can just listen to the audio. Yeah, sounds great. Uh, so yeah, I. Uh, it's funny. I guess I'm classified as a non-traditional, although I did have a little bit of consulting background. But coming straight from retail, I think, is slightly a different. Um, background than, than, than many other candidates. I guess a couple ways of answering the question. One is just as someone who didn't come from a very significant quant background, there are a lot of resources early on when you get to the GSB helping you sort of get up to speed on business basics and fundamentals to help you essentially set you up for better success as you progress into the interview process. And if you're doing formalized recruiting and finance, as an example, that would be really critical. So, so those were, I think, just very helpful in terms of getting up to speed and getting some business fundamentals under my belt as I, you know, moved along in the curriculum. Um, and then in terms of pivoting into sort of consumer or, or retail, um, I didn't come at it from a lens of wanting to get into pers uh, consumer within the finance space, but Really, I would say any background I think is um, can can bring a lot of value to the industry. And so sort of, I already came from the retail space, but I spent a lot of my time early on networking with folks who were the class ahead of me in the consumer and retail club. And honestly, that initial outreach I did was how I ended up at El Maquillage, just a kind of chance encounter with someone who interned there the summer before, who ended up becoming sort of like a mentor friend figure to me at the GSB was sort of the path that that led me into the conversations that opened up the door for the internship. So I guess um, kind of two answers is basically there are plenty of resources for non-traditional candidates to get up to speed on business fundamentals, not to mention how amazing the Career Center is. Um, Grace in particular, who kind of focuses on the retail uh, vertical is absolutely one of the most well-connected people I've come across at the GSB and that's saying something. And she just kind of sends you lit a litany of different emails and, and people that you can reach out to in the consumer space. And then on top of that, I would say the Consumer and Retail Club is an absolutely amazing group 
pretty tight knit group of people because it's not a huge pathway that, that folks take at the GSB. Um, and so very eager to help and, and connect you with, with people in their network. So um, I'm also happy to, you know, answer any specific questions about consumer retail sort of offline, um, if that's helpful. Yeah. Thanks, Del. You bring up a big, big, um, a good point, which is being able to capitalize and leverage the resources and um, time effort that all of the uh, advisors at the Career Management Center offer to students. So regardless of whether you plan to you know, pivot your career um, after the GSB or you stay in the same path that you've been in. They offer um, lots of opportunities, both from advising as well as a self-directed job search opportunities and networking and, and lots of connections. So that's very true. Um, one question Peter brought up in the um, Q&A was um, if the panel could comment on how the GSB has either helped them hone in on their career vision and path and or broaden their horizons. Uh, sort of when I hear that, I think of the, the course that the Career Management Center offers on um, you know, career visioning. Uh, but I'd love to hear from some of you if either you use those resources or other things to help you hone in on that. Anyone want to start that conversation? Uh, yeah, I can. I can talk about. Um, I, I think I'm still very much developing my vision, but I can talk about the broadening my horizons perspective. And my time at the GSB, at the GSB, and even after since I've left, as I'm talking to classmates, um, have continued to be broadened. I, I came to GSB knowing I wanted to do consulting because I wanted that flexibility. So I was pretty tunnel vision in that sense. Um, but as I've talked to other classmates about just like what like venture capital and what like, I didn't explore it as much at the GSB, but like now that I'm working in strategy and thinking, looking at startups, even in my current role, I'm like, wow, that's actually a very, very cool industry to be in. And it might actually work for me and I might find it interesting. interesting. And what I've been able to do with the GSB is still talk to the career advisors. You get you get free coaching sessions. I think like three of them. Um, so I, I'm I'm talking to them. I'm talking to my classmates, uh, developing a perspective. I, I don't know if this is necessarily what I want to do, but it's definitely like oh, this could be an option, and um, it could make sense for me. And I again still figuring out what I want to do, but it's it's definitely broadened that horizon. Something I, that would not have come hadn't come to mind um, had it been not for the GSB and the community. Yeah. yeah, I think you bring up a good point. The Career Management Center is not just a resource you use as a student, but one that you have for your lifelong career. And being able to take advantage of that is, is wonderful. So I'm glad that you've done that. Um, Carolyn, did you want to jump in? Yeah, I'd also be happy to add um, kind of on the theme of career enhancement and um, advancement, I guess. I, I came into the GSB pretty sure of what I wanted to do afterwards. I'd been an operator and an investor in impact investing and just knew that I loved that space. Um, but I'd also been in South Africa for four years. And so making the geographic transition back to the US and um, understanding the landscape of impact investing across the US was very different. When I'd left in um, the very beginning of 2013, impact investing was just a much more nascent industry. And in the years I'd been gone, it had developed significantly. And so being able to leverage the speakers and the um, professor connections while I was on campus um, in order to meet a ton of different people and really get a feel for myself for the landscape of impact investing. And then also to be in a cohort of classmates that are all really purpose-driven, whether that means they're gonna go on to be entrepreneurs or consultants or investors or other kinds of operators. Um, it just meant that I now have, when I'm looking at new in, uh, investment opportunities, this cohort of people to reach out to, to rely on for subject matter expertise, um, for deal structuring, uh, for a whole variety of support. Um, and it's, it's really enhanced my career. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else for Nell or Sasha that you want to add or did they kind of touch on that? The one thing I'll add is, so, so a few things. A, my husband is also a GSB alum and he, we were based in New York. He moved out to the Bay with me, uh, you know, for the two years. And 
even then the career center was very helpful in helping him negotiate his offer, helping him figure out how to transition uh, as an SO in his own career. And so that was amazing to see. And then the second thing I'll say is I came to the GSB not quite knowing what I would do next. I ended up in venture capital, which was the last place I imagined myself being in. Uh, but it actually, the job came from talking to an alum and the conversation was more around, hey, I want to be an operator. This is what I'm thinking. And they look at me and they're like, hey, you should actually consider venture capital. And I got the job after a 20 minute conversation. I kid you not, it was probably the third conversation I had for recruiting. Um, and so I, in that sense, that people are just very real and very good at helping you parse out where you'd be a good fit. That's a great point. Um, all right, well, let's certainly you've been able, all of you in one way, shape or form to broaden your horizons or leverage the resources available. Um, can you talk a little bit about, well, let's do this first. Um, for those of you who have returned, I, Sasha, I know you're still completing your degree, but we'll, we'll count it and still returning to the East Coast post GSB. Um, for how many of you were, was it intentional, like, or you know, you plan to do it. So Nell, yes, Sasha, okay, JB maybe. Or for which of who, with whom uh, was it more serendipitous or unplanned? Yeah, okay. Okay, so for the intentional ones, was there anything, Sasha, Nell, I know JB sort of, would either of you speak to how you went about going going about that, because I think that's one of the things that many of our prospective candidates think about is if I land at the Stanford GSB on the West Coast, am I committed to staying out there? What's the opportunity to, you know, move to the East Coast and what sort of um, resources will be available to me? So um, now do you want to start out, maybe talk a little bit about that? I know it's it hasn't been long for, for um, you either, but maybe you can speak to that. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so I uh, I actually was, I don't say hesitant to accept my GSB offer because I knew I wanted to, but I was knew that I wanted to end up back in New York. It's where I'm from. My parents are here. My family's here. My um, significant other is here. So I was definitely, I was nervous about moving cross country and wanting to make sure that I was leaving open the door to come back. So when I got to school, I sort of focused a lot of my networking calls on alums in the consumer and retail space that were based in New York. Um, and actually the, the uh, alum who interviewed me, it, you know, was in the consumer and retail space in New York City and was like instrumental in kind of connecting me with people and, and being a resource for me, even as I got to the GSB, which just goes to show you that like, I don't know how strong the you know connections are within the network that like the person that interviewed me and was sort of like a stop gate and seeing if I even got in ended up like really helping me along the way, which I thought was cool. Uh, and so when then I got to school, um, I was actually surprised by how many members of both my class and the class above sort of had intentions of going back to the East Coast. So I didn't feel like I was in a place where I was like, an anomaly that I didn't actually want to stay in the Bay Area. So um, not to say that I sort of focus only my conversations on those people, but in terms of networking, like I was very intentional about um, having coffee chats and, um, you know, having conversations with alums who were, who were based East Coast and sort of understanding how they did it. And then I would say like the job opportunity was serendipitous in that it was maybe similar to Sasha, like one of the first conversations I have ended up being kind of checking the boxes on both functional type of role that I wanted for my summer internship experience and in the geographic area. Um, and so I didn't really explore anything else beyond that. I would say partially because then COVID happened and getting a job and a growing startup at that stage in the beauty industry was like, not gonna happen. I mean, there weren't a lot of people hiring at that stage. So um, yeah, I would say, so kind of networking was intentional and then um, it, I ended up just sort of seizing an opportunity that came quickly. But um, I don't know if it's, happenstance or just my own personal vantage point, but I but I definitely do get the sense that within the recent GSB classes, they're skewing like less towards West Coast than they have historically. And I definitely feel like in terms of representation from like mine and Sasha's class, like uh, there are so many more people that are back on the East Coast than I ever would have anticipated. So um, it's not at all a challenging move to make to end up back on the East Coast if that's where you want to be. 
Sasha, I see you nodding your head. So anything else you want to add? And then I'll, I'll go to Carolyn, who has a different experience. <laughs> yeah, plus one on everything Nell said. For me, I was also more relaxed about it because my husband's class of 20, I'll call him Evan. His name is Evan. Uh, he's class of 2013. And so I saw. Oh, yeah, I know, network. Evan. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. So I saw his network here. Like so many of our close friends are GSB. Um, so it was never a thing for me to think that I'd be on the East Coast and there wouldn't be a lot of alums just because I'd seen it on the other side. Gotcha. All right, and then Carolyn, for you, where it wasn't necessarily intentional, more serendipity, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I'll say um, in terms of where some classmates have landed, especially at this point in time, a few, a few years out, not far though, um, there's a really strong cohort in New York and there's probably half a dozen of us in DC that have, just from my class alone, that's been a wonderful community and landing place. Um, and then the other piece that's been a really good part of my DC experience has been, there's an organization that's called um, GSB Women's Circles, and it mm -hmm. connects intergenerational women alumni from GSB. Uh, and I think there are nine women in my circle, we meet once a month, and it's such a wonderful way to stay connected to the experience that we had on campus and some of the deeper questions that we ask ourselves while we're there. Um, and, uh, and just, you know, I'm uh, having my first child in, a, in about a month, and uh, we had a baby shower together and the, ex <laughs> the experience and support um, that the intergenerational factor of this circle has been really a wonderful part of the experience. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. And congratulations. JB's clapping because um, we, we learned he just welcomed a little girl into the world in May. So you're in good company. JB, when you, I, I know Philadelphia, well, you moved either pre-pandemic and then the pandemic happened. So it's been a and you had a baby, by the way, and all of this. Um, so what have been the outlets, if any, that you've used to stay connected? Or what kind of advice might you give um, individuals who are explore, exploring other smaller markets on the East Coast, for example? Yeah, I guess the first thing I'll say is you might be surprised with GSBers. I, I just remember this as people are talking. The reason I got into Comcast was because I reached out to someone. I looked up. I saw an opening and I was like, uh, I don't know anyone at Comcast. Let me look up Comcast. <laughs> and like someone popped in and was like XBCG, XGSB and worked in HR. So I was like, I guess this person, I should reach out to this person. So GSBers are all, all over all over the place. And Philly is not the biggest market in general. Um, but th the reason we, I, we decided to come here is I knew there's the flexibility of, hey, it's, it's a short train ride to New York um and that's always or dc and so there's always a possibility and we're not um necessarily stuck in stuck in philadelphia if you can't find something um but uh, but to answer the question like outlets i'm so connected with my everyone from the gs um from the gsb my friends in new york and my even the, the ones still in, in san francisco um talking to them very often i think the pandemic just made this whole digital because we we're all locked down for a year it didn't even feel um like I was in a different except for the time difference it didn't really feel like I was in a different place because everyone was stuck at home anyway uh so stayed connected via um via zoom and um and everything with them uh and I I think like doing that and then just trying to find your community where you are at because people are people are there uh been a little bit more difficult for me with the baby and only starting to like get out of the house very recently but um that's what I'm looking to do now Thank you. Um, I'm going to go to a question in the um, Q&A that Jake um, put in. Um, his question is, one of the main reasons that GSB appeals to me, and, and frankly, probably many candidates, is its focus on developing leaders. Um, can you, on the panel, share what you felt were the most impactful or member, um, memorable 
leadership trainings or growth opportunities um, that you've had or in some cases are having. So I'd actually love to hear from each of you because you may have different experiences or um, ways in which you engaged in the leadership curriculum or other things on campus. I, I guess I'll start with Sasha, your most recent and still in the thick of a little little. Do you want to talk a little bit about that for you? Sure. Yes, I am in the thick of it. So I've completed a year at um, Stanford, and I've also completed a year at the Kennedy School. So I have uh, one more year left, and this is what they call my split year. Mm -hmm. And uh, the year that I was at Stanford, uh, three-fourths of it was in person. Um, and I'd say there were a few things that really stood out for me, and it had nothing to do whether it was in person or not. So the first is I launched uh, Stanford's first conference on digital currencies and payments. And I actually did that with a professor that's a, that's at Stanford that's well world renowned in the in the area, and I actually wrote about him in my YGSB essay. Like I really really wanted to work with him, and not only did I get the chance to work with him, but we built something amazing where we flew in economists uh, from the IMF and the Bank of England, and it was just really really incredible. So that's one. The second is I took a finance class that I loved. Um, it's called Finance 207. It's a governance finance class. And I got to work with that professor to revamp the whole curriculum uh, when things went virtual. And that was so cool and fun. Um, ultimately, I think I want to be a professor uh, at some point in my life. And that was an amazing experience. Uh, and then the third thing I'll say is the people and talk. Um, I did a talk um, right before the end of my first year. And it was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. It was an opportunity. Uh, for me to show up as my whole self in a way I hadn't ever before in my life. Um, and I built really close relationships, not because of that, but in addition to that. Um, and so those, those are probably the three highlights. Even I do that. Um, thank you for sharing. And I do wish you the best on your journey to um, pursue professorship or teaching in some way, shape, or form in your career. I'm going to work um, reverse chronologically. So we, you're most recent. Now I'll, I'll just go to Nell to see if she has anything to add as it relates to that developing leader um, or any memorable experience that might be helpful for folks to hear about. Sure. Uh, I have two kind of quick ones I can touch on. One actually was sparked by, by Sasha explaining the kind of the conference. Uh, I was one of the gala co-chairs for the GSB Gives Back Gala, which is a large, uh, the largest fundraiser and largest event that the GSB has every year where we raise money. We raise over $100,000 for charities and put on a massive kind of like 700 person event, which these days sounds kind of un unfathomable that those actually happened. But um, it actually happened right before everything went virtual last year for COVID um, and was just, you know, I, I sort of, with a couple of other co-chairs, organized and executed the day of the, you know, the actual fest event and, and we successfully were able to raise that money for charities. And um, I think just being able to put on an event like that, I mean, I have no experience like party planning, event planning, anything like that, and, and being able to sort of be a representative of Stanford um, and sort of organize this, this huge culminating celebration for 750 people was, was awesome. And also very challenging. I, I hate sending emails, like big blast emails out to the class. And I sent like probably 15 that night or something like that. So even that was like a leadership moment for me. And then I would say, um, a second one is just touchy feely, not necessarily, I would say seen as like a leadership class. It's maybe more of like an interpersonal class. It's actually called interpersonal dynamics, but I was in a T group that was fully virtual during COVID and I just had like an absolutely unbelievable experience in that setting. It didn't matter that it was virtual. And my biggest learning was kind of how I can um, come, come across sometimes like non-verbally and I had no like, awareness of, of sort of different things that I was potentially giving off um, and, and being able to be in a group of people that I felt so comfortable with who were delivering feedback to me that I can now action and, and now I'm running a team for the first time and being so much more aware of like nonverbal cues I'm giving off um, it was was absolutely instrumental to me and I think will just be a huge value add as I as I learn kind of how to lead a team for the first time.
I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. You know, I haven't had an opportunity to connect with a lot of the current students and see how that experience has been. So I'm, I, it's nice to hear that even in a remote or virtual setting that you still um, got the value out of, especially an experience like interpersonal dynamics, which really focuses so much on, you know, wanting to put your full self forward and still being able to do that. Um, for either Carolyn and JV, do you want to chime in and share anything from your experience that might have been the most memorable or impactful in your leadership journey? Sure. I'm glad um, I'm glad Touchy Feely was touched on because <laughs> that was one one on my mind. But I'd also say a couple of others. So I you're going to hear an impact theme here, but um, there is an impact fund that the GSB has, which is a really incredible opportunity um, to actually have a pool of capital that gets invested that um, students lead to invest each year. Um, and it's completely student run as an organization and the, the sub teams of um, financial inclusion or energy in the environment are run by students as well. And so I participated my first year, had a fabulous experience and decided to be a, uh, an in, a sector leader the second year for energy and the environment. And then um, I also took a class um, that was called that um, is taught by Heidi Patel and Charles Ewald called investing for good. Uh, my first year loved it. Um, was offered the opportunity to be a TA, a teaching assistant to um, Heidi and Charles in my second year. And it both allowed me to meet the next generation class um, that shared the same interest area that I do, um, but also to develop a strong relationship with both Heidi and Charles, which was wonderful. Um, and then the last one, there's, there's courses that are amazing for this as well. So like Touchy Feely, there's a course called uh, Managing Difficult Conversations. And it's all about putting you in the moment of a case study and having to play a role of someone in that case and how they would have to handle a really challenging work conversation. Um, and it gives you the opportunity to practice those when it's a hypothetical situation before at some point in your career, you will be in that, <laughs> in that challenging situation and have to take it on the fly. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Those are great, great um, examples. And thank you for reminding me of all the different ways in which you can get engaged. JB, anything to add? Yeah, just um, one thing to, to add. I was in, um, so we've talked about the, the clubs you can join, the classes you can you can take. Um, I was an Arbuckle fellow. Um, so that means I, I took touchy feely, but then you're also a coach. In your second year, you're a coach to either a leadership labs group and also three, um, I think it was three, three first years throughout the, the like the second and third quarter. Um, and I will say like the the learning from having these real conversations and trying to coach people um, in in of subject areas that you don't know. Like one of my coaches was a doing his own startup at GSB in his first year, and he's asking me for advice. And you realize like I can't give advice; I just have to help him think through how to solve problems because I. I don't know the answers and he has, he's going to know the answers more than I could. Um, but that, that's, that was just such a great program. I'm, I'm very fortunate to have gotten into it. And the learning I, I got from that, I've, I've taken it as like when I became a project leader at BCG and now, and even in my current role as I have um, young, younger people who have, I'm working with and trying to like help them in their careers and give them guidance and such. Yeah. The Arbuckle Fellows Program is wonderful, and I know it's very popular, and not everyone can do it, so I'm glad you had the opportunity to, to really get involved in that way. Um, there's one question that actually, this is probably going to go back to something you said previously, Carolyn. So um, a comment about your classmates being purpose-driven. How often do students bring up social stakeholder impact when discussing business decisions? And do these discussions take place mostly in only like social impact classes or more broadly, if there's anything you can share there? Yeah, so one of the things that attracted me the most to Stanford, and I think this has only become more true <clears throat> over the years, um, was that there are impact oriented case studies across the curriculum, even if it's not specifically an impact class. So in a like 101 kind of accounting class, um, that will be part of the case studies, which I think is really phenomenal. So there's a common language across the student body, whether that's your focus area or not. And then um, when I think about purpose-driven, I just, I think about how many different 
avenues there are to have purpose in your career these days like that I almost use the impact definition with air quotes um, because you can also, I remember there's um, a, a friend I made at Stanford who went into an operating role at a big fast food chain trying to make their supply chain more sustainable. And that's probably one of the highest leverage impact roles you can have. Um, and it's not necessarily designated as impact. Um, so I think there are a lot of people who are asking them these themselves these questions of how can I have more purpose and more impact in my life in whatever field I go into and that I found really attractive. Thank you. Thanks so much. That was helpful. Um, this is it, this is the part of the session where people are seeking advice, which I appreciate. So the question that Christina poses is: Knowing what you know now, would you have done anything differently in terms of the curriculum or your experience on campus? And then also, how much experience? did everyone have before they applied? So we can talk about, and that would be probably years of work experience, um, but let, let's start first with Nell who just graduated and has a few months under her belt. Um, knowing what you know now and looking back, was there anything that you might do differently? Um, yeah, I'm sure there are. I, I think one thing is that it, is very easy to get sort of consumed by different components of school. Um, and I don't think I was super intentional in the first quarter of my first year around like how I wanted to be spending my time. And I definitely did a lot of like brown bag lunches that I had no interest and in, should not have been at because they're just like nothing related to what I wanted to do. And um, I think I wish, I wish I was a little pickier about like how I was spending my time early on um, and also giving myself the latitude to like do nothing during lunch and actually just like sit and breathe for a second. So that's one thing I think just give yourself some credit early on that it's a stressful experience and, and you can kind of give yourself a little breathing room. Second is I, I don't think I took good enough advantage just over the course of the two years. I think COVID was a big part of it, but not, not an excuse uh, of like developing close relationships with professors. There are a couple that I liked a lot and we had really good rapport in class. And I just, I didn't really push myself often to um, like ask if I could take them to coffee or, or like just have a more personal relationship with them. There were a handful that I did, but I think I could have um, probably leaned into that more. And I think those are you know, some of the most valuable relationships that you can forge with the GSB are a lot of uh, lecturers or alumni who have like, very fascinating stories to tell you about their GSB experience um, and professors who are just absolutely experts in the fields that they're instructing on. So that's probably one thing I wish I did differently. Um, but otherwise, no, I mean, I think, I, I think those are, I think I could probably look back at a million other things and tell you that they, I could have done them differently. But in, the, in hindsight, I, I'm super thrilled with how the experience went and um, and sort of proud of the relationships I was able to forge and challenging myself in like accounting and finance, which I truly never want to take again. So um, I think other than that, pr pr probably all, all in all a good experience. Um, I want to speak a little bit to something you said, because, you know, I've been at the GSB since 2005 and stepped out for a little bit when I had my son, but there was always, and I know many of you are pro probably familiar with the the acronym FOMO, fear of missing out. But it, I believe in the most recent years, there's there's also been the introduction of JOMO, which is the joy of missing out. So when you say now, for example, you took the opportunity to just like sit and enjoy your lunch or, you know, be able to say no when presented with lots of opportunities. I think that there's some um, uh, permission now given for both for both of those to exist at the GSB. Um, Sasha, I know you're still, uh, you know, you've had one year, you still have an opportunity to relive some things in your split year. Are there any things that you're more focused on, especially as Nell says, you know, I wish I had been a little bit more intentional, but you know, things in which you're, you're hoping to take advantage of in your, your last year. Yeah, it's kind of cool because I get to see my friends complete their degree and then I still have a year left. And so that's been great. Uh, so I get to learn from people like Nell. I think for me, the intentionality point that Nell mentioned really hit home. So when COVID hit, 
it kind of forced me to take a step back and ask myself why I'm doing things. And I actually stepped down from leadership positions in a couple of clubs and instead decided to pick three things and do them really, really well, as opposed to 10 things and like having, a, you know, my hand in everything. And um, that's been very helpful for me and has also allowed me to deepen friendships within the kind of the three things that I chose. Um, so I'd say from time to time, you know, when you get overwhelmed, just take a step back and ask yourself why you're doing what you're doing. That's really good advice. Um, for the two of you who have a few years under your belt, JB, Carolyn, anything now as you reflect having been, you know, now, now that I've been out a few years, some sage advice or wise. Yeah, JB, go ahead. Well, I, I'm laughing because like my advice is a little bit counter to what was just said because I was going to say explore um, is what I, I guess it, it, look everyone is it's your own individual path I was I came in there with very like very much tunnel vision knew I was going to do consulting once I got the consulting offer decided to pick classes that I felt would help me for consulting in the future um, and I, I wish I had spent more time exploring uh, other just other things that like I wouldn't have known because uh, I came from such a niche industry myself in Hollywood and um, they're just different opportunities I, I just never thought about until I ended up leaving GSP and talking to other people. Um, so I guess like, look, there's a balance you have to have, of course, um, of explore, exploration but and intentionality. And it's different for everyone. It depends on your circumstances. But for me, I wish I'd done a little bit more exploring um, while at my time with GSP. I think that's a great point because it is something where for everybody, depending on how you how and when you're stepping in, in your stage of your career or life path, you might have certain uh, goals that you're trying to uh, uncover or discover. And so, yes, absolutely, the GSB is two years of exploration and, and take advantage of that. And also um, without any type of intentionality, sometimes it can be difficult to figure that out, but that's also part of the process. So everyone comes in from a different, uh, a different vantage point. Um, Carolyn, anything else? I think when Nell said just having downtime for lunch mm -hmm. and to be able to meet whoever comes by and just they're like have an open table and really get to know your classmates that resonates strongly with me. Um, a little bit of an out, but a, a, something I'd say you should do there, there are amazing cross listed classes and opportunities to take classes at other schools, whether it's the design school or the policy school the law school, like that was a real plus for me. Um, and there's just so many, so in some ways that like opens up the possibilities even more because now you don't just have to look at GSB classes, you can look at all the other schools too, but it's a, it's a really special opportunity. Yeah, yeah that is, we, we didn't really talk too much about it today, but that is something to take advantage of that, you know, you're on the Stanford campus and that gives you the opportunity to explore so many things, whether the law school, the engineering school, the school of medicine, um, the school of education, there are many ways that you can get involved and take um, I believe, and if it, I'm not mistaken, it's still somewhat like 12 years applied at any other um, school applied to your, your degree. So um, a lot of students do take advantage of that. I know we're coming up on time. Um, so we only have a few more minutes to go. Um, one of the things that often comes up is just advice, like less, you know, sort of parting words and, and things to think about, especially as some of these folks consider applying, you know, around when deadline is coming up in about a month. So if there's any words of encouragement, um, I'll kind of allow you guys to popcorn this, but if you want to convey any messages to those who are on today, um, what might that be as they think about taking this next step in their journey? I can jump in just super quickly, but um, I didn't mention this, but I was actually a re-applicant. And so I would just say the, the thing I did differently the second time around was a lot of self-reflection and like being super authentic in my essays. And I didn't stop for one second to think about 
what I thought any school wanted to hear. I just like wrote an essay that was meaningful to me. So just if you're thinking about what you should be writing and things like that, um, I guess my words of wisdom are just like, do a lot of soul searching and, and come up with something that if you were to read it to your friends and family, they would, you know, think, you know, this sounds like Nell and um, I'm like honored that I got to, you know, able to write something that felt like that to me. Yeah, that's a good piece of advice, not only because it starts the journey of self-reflection in the application, but is also a really big component of the experience, right? Your two years. And so it, it sets the stage. Uh, JB? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, will say, I will second, like second that. Uh, I, I truly believe the only reason I got into Stanford was because of my What Matters Most to Me and why I say I spent a lot of time thinking about that and was we're oddly proud, probably too proud of like what I put together because I was like, wow, this really is me. And so much so that I still look at it. And as I'm trying to figure out how to navigate my career and what I actually like, I wrote about creativity and I'm like, yeah, wow, like this, this piece of paper that helped me get into Stanford, um, I spent a lot of time thinking about it. It still defines where I want to be and what I enjoy most when, when working. So um, write, I, I stay authentic to yourself and um, I still think like where, what other school you you do end up in, that school will read that and get the authentic you, and then you will be at the right place. Yeah. I just want to be clear. You have no idea how you were admitted. <laughs> I the, let's know that I think. Um, <laughs> so that's always the thing. But it, it is, regardless, it's the type of exercise, as you said, and I think it's really important to have people understand that if you do it well, regardless of whether you're admitted, it should be something that speaks to who you are at the core of who you are and what impacts your decisions. And I hear it all the time from alums that they do go back and they read that essay and they use it as a benchmark for trying to you know, guide them in the decisions they make in, in their future. So nonetheless, it's a, it's a good, valuable exercise, no matter whether it got you in or not. <laughs> um, Sasha, Carolyn, any last seeming parting thoughts? Yeah, I'd be happy to add. I was, um, I was on the like quote unquote older side. I think I had about seven years of experience when I, when I went to the GSB and, um, and I found that to be the best for me. I'd had some um, real world management experience of managing teams. I'd had some tough um, investment experiences of, you know, relationships with entrepreneurs who I'd invested in that were challenging and helping them to navigate their challenges. And so I felt like I had by that point, a better sense of what it was that I wanted out of the experience. And to the, to the perspectives we've heard a bit, maybe a bit more reflection on who I was and where I was coming from. And I sometimes get that question from people of like, am I too late to apply? And I think I had such a rich experience for the stage that I was at in my life and my career. That's great. It's, it's different for everybody, right? Apply when you're re ready, but no one's a hundred percent ready. But when you're like, almost there, because that's when you can make the most of it. I, Sasha, anything? Yeah, so two thoughts. I echo what Carolyn, Carolyn said. I had nine years of experience and had just gotten married two months before I started GSB. So I was planning a wedding and applying to business school and completely echo everything she said. It was nice to know yourself a little more. And then on the reflection point that was brought up, I journaled every single day for two months to write my what matters most to me and why essay. And so by the time that essay was written, it was like, this is who I am as a whole. Um, and I felt very confident in that. And there's something to, to me, there was something nice. Like I gave it a hundred percent and you know how, how it turns out, it, it turned out. And actually I was deciding between job offers not that long ago and a classmate, I called a classmate up and he was like, Hey, does this align with what you wrote in your what matters most to you and why essay? And I thought that exercise was very helpful. That's a great point. Thank you all. I, I really appreciate each and every one of your perspectives today. I thought it was a great conversation. And for those um, participants who joined us today, I hope you found value hearing from our students and alums. Um, thanks again for your time, everyone. Uh, Sasha, JB, Nell, Carolyn, thanks again. Really appreciate it. And uh, have a great afternoon and evening. Mm -hmm.